quick recap here now of functions and modules do classes as a separate video all a function is is a piece of code that will perform a specific task one of the main reasons for writing a function is so you can call it numerous times okay and inside when you're defining a function you can give it parameters and those are the data we'll call it the data that you pass in and what comes back from a function we're going to call a result okay and that's uh, just keeping with modern python conventions the code that is inside a function is referred to as the body now i'm talking about python but functions are in many many languages and they all do the same thing they take inputs which are parameters and generally they perform some task and they return a result the other thing we talked about in class was the side effects that can happen which is inadvertently changing or manipulating data outside of a function when you call the function so the function accidentally changes something outside or on purpose one of the beauties of python is you can have functions with default values so the example that is right there message here is a default value a little bit about the default values we did talk about that and what happens and we talked about mutability and so if a list is mutable uh, and you change it inside a function it is changed for all aliases of that list pass by reference is basically talking uh, in a broad sense when a parameter variable is passed in an alias is created in Python terms to that variable and that variable happens to be a mutable object and we change it then it changes in the calling code so this is an example of a side effect where a is a list I is an index inside the list and J is another index in the list and in this case what we're doing is we're swapping two elements of the list okay at index i and j so one of the reasons we want to use modules a lot is it allows for code reuse but more importantly it can allow us to break down problems and take them in solvable chunks okay so we need to be able to contain an entire problem in our head in order to solve it and uh, what we want to do is if we can break that problem down small enough then we can solve it, we can mark it solved, and after that we can then move on to another problem. Then we take all those solutions and we use those to solve an even bigger problem. That's what modular program does. Now modules could be in one file, but usually you're going to keep them in different files and you're going to group functions okay, together by purpose. In general sense, we're abstracting the client from the implementation with an API in the middle. And this happens when we do something as simple as uh, use a math library to calculate a square root. So we call the program that uses a module the client. The API is the definition of what the module will do. Uh, when we import factors, we have to call our functions that are in our module by calling the module name and then the function name. That's kind of important. Some people will get that wrong. And the implementation is simply the code that's written that has Python code. Important to note that modules don't always have to be written in the same language that they're used in. And that's the whole beauty of abstractions for modular programming. Using this factors example, which we briefly looked at. So we have some functions that are inside the factors file factors.py we can view the api by typing help factors depending on what's been there and it's going to give us a bunch of information on factors simply from the comments that are inside of the file so what i want to talk about now is we had these three files we started kind of playing with them already in, in the last class and we have the implementation of factors so that's our factors.py file we have our client which is going to use the factors and we're simply going to call it on the command line. We're going to say Python 3, and we're going to call it factor test, and we're going to give it the number 6 and 45. How it runs is our program starts. The very first call is going to call the start executing the file that we gave the Python interpreter. So that's factor test. Factor test is going to come along, and it's going to hit <clears throat> our first function call, and it's going to jump over into the module file. Okay, and start running this function. OK, 
Okay, we've imported it. It's actually already part of our program space, program memory space, and we will now execute this. But while we're in the middle of that, of course, we've used a math function, square root, and the built-in math module, which you'll see is imported up here, okay, is also at play. So we will execute that. That will then return the value back into our function. So you can see how these are stacking one on top of the other. And after that returns, we will return then to our original caller with the value, with the return, the result. I want to get into calling uh, what comes back out of a function of result and you feed into it in a general sense data. Okay, and that is just keeping with some current practices for Python. Okay, so functions return results and what you feed into them is data. Um, okay, so why modular? It's so that we can abstract things away and solve big problems by keeping the code chunks and the amount of file and amount of lines in a file small. It's easier to understand, to debug, maintain, reuse, improve. There's a whole lot of benefits to breaking things down. One of the big things with modular programming, and you'll find this when you get into a big team of programmers, is you might only have to work on one section. So you'll be given a specification to say, hey, this is what you're going to write on. And this is what your functions have to do. And here's the data that's going to come into them. And that's all you know. You are writing a black box for someone else that is expecting to use your black box. One of the big problems with modular programming is naming things. No, it's how to break it into independent modules. Where do you divide it? The example I use for that is if you had a bag of marbles, okay, and the marbles have different sizes and different colors. Do you separate the marbles by size or do you separate the marbles by color? It's a pretty easy example. That same problem happens when you're coding. How do you divide the modules up? What belongs with what? And how do you specify an API? So some best practices when you're designing modules, you want to keep them small, okay, separate. You want to have a layer of abstractions. Your client and your module are developed separately, but you do want to plan for future needs. So if you can see something where if you were making a student information system and you had a, a field of first name and last name and a student number, if you think about information that you might need in the future, you might need an address and test clients. So I'm going to show you some testing frameworks, a very, very simple one. Um, and the whole idea behind them is to allow you to make sure that every line of your code is executed. Okay. And quite frequently, they will use command line arguments, those test clients. And that's what we did in the, in the factor example.